Greetings, this is Chris Ruby, the Nostalgia Catholic, with yet another Isaac Asimov short story review. This one appeared in the um, April 1951 issue of Amazing Stories. Actually, it had been written about a year before, but it took a while to place the story because there was, uh, he was hoping to place it in one of what they called the slicks, which is to say the fancy high-class magazines like um, Saturday Evening Post or Collier's or something like that where you know, the, the paper is glossy and you know, big magazines. And that didn't happen and finally he actually gave it to his friend Fred Pohl who was once again acting as kind of an agent capacity to see what he could do with it. It ended up turning up in Amazing Stories which is kind of an amazing revisit of where his own uh, publications got their start. And so he has a story called Satisfaction Guaranteed. Uh, needless to say, it didn't get the cover once again. So, but at least it is listed in the table of contents, so we'll just take a quick look at that. So, print's kind of small. Alright, there it is near the top. Satisfaction Guaranteed. This is short, 5,000 words. Isaac Asimov, page 52. There's a blurb. I'll just read the blurb. It's kind of hard to see. Robots can be made, sure, but some things baffle even a man of metal. Take women, for example. Having read the story, I'm not so sure the blurb exactly fits. I'll just mention there is a robot, and the robot is probably the one character that is not baffled. But okay, whatever. All right, let's, let's get to the actual story. Um, it has another blurb and some artwork for the caption. So let's take a look at the uh, thing here. So it says, um, for a woman to fall in love, the man should be young, handsome, rich, kind, and a human. Mm -hmm. So take a look at that well and then uh, well let's see. she tried to blot out of her mind and heart the fact that this man was not human okay so here we have what is it, actual scene from the story this woman being kind of held by this man, he's got an interesting look to his face. Actually, kind of pretty close. And I've always pictured uh, robot uh, Daniel Oliva, by the way. But this guy doesn't have expressions that can change, so he's kind of like a very inexperienced our Daniel Oliva. And his name is actually Tony. But there is a scene towards the end of the story where he does this so that the onlookers, which are these other ladies that she's rivals with. Can get all jealous, which of course is the whole point. I don't know. It seems to me that's a pretty savvy robot to know how to make satisfy one woman by making her rivals jealous. So satisfaction guaranteed. Now this is showing where the man or robot, I said man shaped robot came from. It's a production line. Let's see, is that more? Yeah, more of that production line in the background there. So, look at that, spare arms, already dressed in uh, fancy striped coats, interesting. So, that's a nice piece of artwork. And then you get to the text of the story. So far as I've been able to tell, the text of the story seems to be reproduced in full and with no discernible differences in his book, uh, Earth is Room Enough, indeed. This uh, story has a distinction of being the oldest or first of the stories to make its appearance in this particular collection of short stories. So, what is the story? Basic outline. The uh, man works for the robot company. And he's working with uh, Dr. Susan Calvin. So, this is I mean, this full robot series stuff. It's like more of iRobot, which it was a while before anything like that would appear. But it finally has, starting here, there'll be more of 
I robot type robot stories, positronic robot stories, even Susan Calvin herself as a character. And it starts, as far as I can tell, right here. So that's also that's kind of neat. So he's working with Dr. Calvin on the um, on this new humanoid type robot. But the robot is um, a practical robot designed to do housework or that sort of thing. So housework ends up extending to some serious interior decorating and even a number of things of uh, uh, things like helping the, the lady, you know, with the clothes and the hairdressing and all this kind of stuff. This guy becomes extremely versatile. But he has that same quiet, calm, almost not quite emotionless uh, respect that just, you know, you always have the robots have. Um, so, what happens is the guy works for this thing, and his wife, it's just his wife, right? Doesn't know anything about robots. You know, that's his job, that's what he does. Now, all of a sudden, she's going to have a job as a tester. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's a testing, huh? And the test is that the idea is you have know, somebody that's inexperienced with robots, doesn't really know about them, doesn't really, probably couldn't even rattle off the three laws of robotics. And yes, this is a three laws of robotics type story. I mean, you, you got Susan Calvin, you know the three laws. So, this is, um, she's going to have this person, this, well, this robot person, in the household. Meanwhile, Hubby goes off to Washington. I'm not quite sure why. I, I don't know. Maybe the robots is headed there. Uh, that was never made clear. But anyway, he's going to be away for three weeks. And the wife is going to be in the house with this robotic being. And uh, now since it is a robot, I guess that should be safe. I mean, it's like uh, you wouldn't worry about whether she was safe with a new vacuum cleaner or a washing machine. So, I mean, the robot just does the same thing, only it comes in the form of a person. And talks and asks what you would like and how you want things and does things for you. And even works all day and all night, doesn't have to sleep, but we'll work quietly on the nights so you can sleep. And this is, so she kind of starts off very uh, suspicious about this whole thing. It looks human, but it isn't. And there's just that subtle, not quite human aspect. Facial expression never changes, for example. So you kind of, um, yeah, it's one of those things where somebody's just. You know, something obviously not human, we can enjoy it, you know, a puppy dog face, right? But when something is almost human, but somehow a little off, you know, we kind of get, ooh, and it's like, eh. And this seems to be kind of like that, and it's definitely having that reaction from her. But in time, she's discovering that he's very, very skilled at uh, making the house look really, really nice, and everything is, of course, absolutely spotless, and, and so on. And finally, enough to make this, I don't know, rival of hers absolutely jealous. And that's kind of the culmination of the whole thing. Three weeks are just about up. She invites this other friend, Gladys, some things anyway, and her other circle of friends over for a little social evening. And they, they come over thinking they're going to laugh at the pathetic lifestyle of this lady, which I guess they would have laughed if they would have come before. Tony entered her life, but now Tony has been there for up to about three weeks almost, and has been renovating everything, doing all this great stuff, and kind of helping her look the part too. And then you get that last little picture, the one we see portrayed in that first picture. He pretends to try to seduce her while the curtains are accidentally on purpose open and everyone waiting to come in the door can see and that's just the ultimate making gladys and gladys as a circle of friends very jealous so it's like oh we learned a lot from this okay you know, maybe i mean i still know some of what we did learn but at any rate it's a fun little story and um, 
it's kind of nice for nice to be able to appear another time a very tiny handful of times left on the pages of amazing stories so so anyway that was a fun little story of I as lost really not too much to say it's just a good little story I really enjoy it and it's also in earth is room enough so thanks for listening